I'm Charles Davidson. I'm the medical director of the Bloom Cardiovascular Institute and the clinical chief of cardiology at Northwestern Medicine. Been in practice for about 25 years. I perform catheter-based therapies that would include valve replacement, valve repair, structural heart disease, and coronary angioplasty. Transcatheter therapy means that you don't use open heart surgery to take care of the patient's problem. Sternum is not broken with this therapy, and we can do this through plastic tubes that are inserted through arteries or veins in the body. There is no heart-lung machine, and in many of these therapies, we do not even use general anesthesia. The beautiful part of transcatheter therapies is there is a faster recovery for the patients. That means shorter hospitalization, quicker ambulation, and more likely to go home rather than to a rehabilitation facility. Tricuspid regurgitation is leaking in the valve on the right side of the heart that connects the top and bottom of the heart. Tricuspid regurgitation can present with shortness of breath, fatigue, leg swelling, and difficulty performing your activities of daily living. Tricuspid regurgitation has long-term risks. It can cause the heart to enlarge and particularly the right ventricle to enlarge. Surgery is often not offered because the risks of surgery often outweigh the benefits, which is why we're interested in a catheter-based therapy which would have less risk, potentially, and still provide the benefits. The SCOUT study is evaluating patients with severe tricuspid regurgitation who are not doing well on medical therapy. At this point, it is a feasibility trial meaning that any patient that qualifies based on symptoms and anatomy may be treated with this device. It is currently being provided in a limited number of centers in the United States in order to understand the safety and efficacy of this percutaneous therapy. This device treats tricuspid regurgitation by taking the enlarged opening around the tricuspid valve and making it smaller. And in so doing, the amount of leaking that occurs around that valve is lessened. A feasibility study means that the FDA has approved this technology to be investigated in a limited number of centers to understand the safety and efficacy of the technology. Typically, after a feasibility study is performed, the data will be evaluated, the patient outcomes will be evaluated, and then a pivotal trial will occur. A pivotal trial is typically designed in a randomized fashion, meaning that half the patients will receive the therapy and half will receive some other therapy, typically medical therapy. If the results from the pivotal trial are favorable, they will provide the information that will allow the FDA to approve this therapy for use in the United States. We look at each patient individually to decide whether surgery, medical therapy, or the latest technology is the best way to treat that patient. We want to be able to provide them all of the treatment options and let the patients and the heart team decide what's the best way to take care of that patient. What's been exciting for me as a physician is that we're able to help patients in a way that we've never been able to help them before. We've been able to make them live longer. We've been able to improve their quality of life been able to really make their families be able to enjoy them more than they have in the past. And to be able to treat people that in the past didn't have good options, where their options required long recoveries, and now we can actually get them up and around better, live longer, it's been a great reward as a physician.